I remember back in university, our professor introduced us to a debugger for C called GDB. At the time, I didn't think much of it. It seemed like a powerful tool, but also way too intimidating. Setting it up felt complicated, and how it worked just seemed mystical. So I stuck with what I knew, which is printf statements. And to be fair, printf can be a powerful way to debug in C. It lets you track your variables and see what's going on as your program runs. But once I started my first job, everything changed. My team showed me how to use the built-in debugger in our IDE, and it completely changed how I debugged. Once I learned how to actually use the debugger, it became my go-to debugging tool. In this video, I'll show you example code where it's hard to fix a bug just using printf statements alone. And I'll show you how to set up your debugger in Visual Studio Code and then use that debugger to fix the bug. And hopefully by doing this, I'm showing you how using a debugger is a better long-term solution for fixing bugs than just using printf. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. Okay, so here we have segmentation fault. So this is one kind of error where it's hard to debug with just using printf statements. So what happens here if we have a segmentation fault? We kind of have to guess where to put the printf statement because we don't know where the code crashed. We don't know where the segmentation fault happened. So we have one printf here. Let's run that and see if we hit this printf. So there you go. We have do we do have this test um, printf there. So that means the fun the program is okay up until this point. So now the question is: Is the issue happening before or after this message? So if you were like me before, I would just comment this out and then I would say I'll put the printf over here, and then we'll see if the test shows up when I run the code. So we run the code again. Okay. So that time, okay, that time we still see the test. So that means. The error is not in this load message from config. So now we comment this out and then uh, let's put the test printf over here and then we run this code. And then, okay, so now we don't see the test anymore. So something that I do is I like to enable all of the printfs and then I can do test one and then test two and then see which one shows up. So we run this one and then Okay, so we see test, test one, but we don't see test two. So that means the error is happening inside process message. And then, so I put in printf here, and then I say in process message. And then let's run this one. Okay, so I made it to test, test one, in process message. So then I know that the error is happening over here. Something I can do is try to print the message. So I can use this printf over here, and then you put this one here to see if we can print the message because apparently something's wrong with the string length function, this strlen function. So let's try to see if we can get the actual message. So let's run this one. And then there you go, it says message null. So that means I got through test, test one, in process message, and then the message is null. And so now the message is null, so that means strlen is trying to find the string length of a null message. So there you go. That's so that's the problem. We found out that the the code is not giving there's no message there. And so now I have to wonder why is there no message there? So that means something happened to the load message from config. We want to verify that this message actually got a message from load message from config. So we should do a, a printf over here to see if we actually got the message. So we'll put the message here and then rerun this one. And then we see message is still null. So we know that the, this load message from config is actually the problem. So you can see, kind of see from my initial steps here that I'm putting a bunch of printf statements and it's kind of starting to look um, pretty messy. So for me, the number one reason why printf statements aren't ideal for debugging is because you kind of have to guess where the issue is happening. All we knew about this program is that it was crashing. And then we put these test printf statements here, test test one and test two. And then we were able to see that the crash was happening inside process message. And then we had to go up here and then 
put in some more printf statements because we don't know exactly where in this function the error is happening. So that's number one. The second reason why I don't like using printf statements for debugging is because there's a lot of recompiling and rerunning. So during our debugging here, we had to recompile the code many times because we kept adding new printf statements. So every time we add a new printf statement, we have to recompile and rerun and try to see what's happening, try to observe what's happening. So it's a lot of trial and error, and it's like you're brute forcing your way into discovering what the bug or what issue is happening in your code. The third reason why I don't like using printf statements for debugging is because it's hard to see the chain of function calls that causes the error or the bug. So here we had to create a printf message saying in process message. And we have to do a lot of these kinds of printf statements to let ourselves know as we're looking at the output to know where which what is the sequence of function calls that causes the error to happen. So we run this one here and then we can know that Okay, the segmentation fault is happening while we're inside in process message. And this leads to the fourth reason why I don't like using printf statements for debugging, because it leads to a very messy output. And it's very hard to piece together the program state and flow from disconnected messages. All right, now let's start over and try to debug this using the debugger instead. So to start off, we first need to make sure we have the right extensions or we have the right capability to actually use a debugger. So I usually recommend people use this extension, C slash C++ runner. So make sure you have this one installed. And then when you want to debug, you just go to your code and then you go to this dropdown and then you use this C slash C++ runner uh, debug file. So we run, run the code using that. And then it's going to start up. And so there you go. Here's the segmentation fault error. And so what we need to do is we need to stop the program first before it goes into this state. So we have to put a breakpoint here. So let's put a breakpoint over here first. And then you can actually just restart the program by clicking this button here. So now we're at the beginning of the program, we're at message, and then you can step through. So every debugger has these five different options. So you can stop the program, restart the program. You can continue running the program. If we run this, it's just going to the segmentation error. So let's restart. So this one here is called continue. This one's called step over. This means we're just going to step over the function here. So we're not gonna go inside the load message from config function. We wanna just go to the next one. So you would use this one here. And so there you go, we went to the next one. But say you wanted to go into load message from config. So you could actually use this one here. So this is called step into. And then now we're inside load message from config and we can see what's going on with this function here. We don't want to go inside the strlen function. We want to step over that. And then we can see that it's returning null. And this button here is for stepping out of the function. Say we want to go out of the function, go back to the main function. So we're back here in the main function. And right now we're up to the point where we had just finished calling this function. And then we're still we're still at this in this line of code here. We haven't set the message yet. So here message is null. And then we go to step forward and then see we see that message is still null. So this is what's really nice about the debugger is you can see the state of the variables as you're going through the code, as you're stepping through it. And so obviously here, if we go into process message and the message is null, then we're going to go inside this function. Let's go inside process message. We're going to use the pro step into. And then we're here, and then message is here, message is null, and then we're going to get the, we're going to try to use sterlin with this message. So right now we're at this point, and then if we keep going, that's where the exception happens. So that's another reason why the debugger is nice, because you can see the exact point in the code where the exception happens. So we can start over, we can go here, we can put the breakpoint again, and then run up to this point. So this continue is just to continue on until the next breakpoint. So we continue on to the next breakpoint. So now we're here and then we can put a breakpoint here to see if we actually get to this breakpoint. And then we run the code, but it's going to run into the exception. Okay, let's start over and go into this load message from config. Let's step into it. 
So we know the problem is here. It's checking the strlen buffer equals zero, and then if it's zero, it's going to return null. But why is it doing that? This is this is this check here shouldn't be here at the beginning because we haven't set the buffer to anything yet. And so we need to we what we realize is we actually have to put this line here and put this above here. So in doing the str copy here, we're ensuring that the buffer has some values here. So we're actually setting the string here. And then, so we have to restart the program. So let's restart the program. Go here, run the debug. Okay, now let's step into load message from config. Okay, here we're going to set the buffer. Okay, so here we have the buffer variable here and we can see that it does have um, a message now, hello from config. And so we shouldn't return null anymore. We should actually just return the buffer. So let's keep going. Okay, now we're going to return buffer. So we keep going. So we're still here. We haven't set message yet. So let's just keep going. And there you go. So now we see that message actually has some information. It has a message from config. So now, now that message is set properly here, we can go into process message. Let's step into it. And then here we can see that message is not null anymore. It actually has a message in it. Hello from config. And we step over that. And then we can see the message like this here, 18. And then we step over this one here. And then hello from config. And then we just keep running. And so there you end the program. And so we're able to fix the bug. We actually got the correct message length and the message. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, now let's try running the code normally without using the debugger. And then there you go. So now we got the message length and then the message itself. And so now we fix the bug with the debugger. So here we were able to see the benefits of using the debugger. We were able to step through the code so we can see the flow of the program. And then with the variables on the side, we can see the state of the program. We can see all the values of the variables. And we're able to avoid all those things, all those problems with printf. First, we had that issue where we didn't know where the issue was happening. We had to guess by adding some printf statements everywhere. So we had to take out, we were able to take out the guesswork. And then second, we didn't have to keep recompiling. We could just we could just keep restarting the program. We didn't have to keep recompiling and rerunning the program. And with the debugger, we can also see the call stack, which is just the chain of function calls that leads to where we are in that part of the code. So here we can see we started and start, and then we went to the main function, and then now we're, we called the process message. And so now we're inside the process message function. So we didn't have to create a printf that says that we're inside the process message. We can just look at the call stack and know where in the program we actually are and how we got there. And lastly, with the debugger, we don't have a messy output where we're trying to piece together what the program was doing. We have the debugger where we're actually stepping through the program so we know exactly what the program is doing line by line. So a debugger isn't just about debugging your code as efficiently as possible. It's actually about clarity. It allows you to see what your program is doing line by line. Another thing you can do with debuggers is you can actually change the value of your variables while the program is running. So say you get to a certain line of code and the variable is not the correct value, you can actually change the value to the correct value and see if your program runs as expected. So that's another benefit of having a debugger. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, there you go. I showed you how using a debugger is a superior tool than just using printfs for your debugging. And if you would like more information on how to use a debugger in Visual Studio Code in C, you can watch this video here.